Right, so this next one we've been called out to is um, an overflowing tank, but it only overflows in the morning. So, as usual, that is normally a sign it's a cold water storage tank filling the hot water cylinder, and during the night it's getting a chance to build this water level up and then start overflowing. And it won't overflow in the day because more, more, more often than not, people are using the hot water and keeping that level down. So, it is a part two ball valve what's in as opposed to a part one, so part two fills from the top. But I don't mess about fixing them these days, I just swap them out, especially when you're messing around in an attic. They're not the nicest of places. This is the uh, ball vault she's given us the issue. You can see it's almost up to the overflow now in this middle of the day. Isolation valve here to shut off. Hopefully that'll be off. Yeah. check there's no uh, water inside the ball meaning that would have failed causing the float to be too heavy and put it see if it's all right put it on your new ball valve could you just open us a hot tap up yeah and just so i can get this water level down any, any, hot, any hot tap just leave it open for a couple of minutes please change the washer on this what's the way you don't want to be reusing fiber washers New fiber washer, and because they end up baggy like this, I always wrap them with a bit of PTP as well. Make sure that's uh, plumb running upright. Pop in and dry off, and get the water back on. like it is to me. So I'm going to show you what you'd have had to have done if you'd had no ball valve on the van. Obviously, you would have tried not to snap the uh, little outlet elbow off like I did. We should wind that. It'll reveal the washer. Yep, yeah, I would have replaced that as well because that is goose. Don't know why the plastic must just go brittle, but that should be nice and smooth and flat for the washer to stop against. So two issues with this one, but like I say, if you get yourself a little toilet repair kit, it comes with bits like this. As I've said, when you're messing in an attic, balancing on joists, it's just easier to swap it out sometimes because they're about seven quid for the whole valve without a ball, but most of the time you don't need a ball. I'm back here again. <laughs> This time, with a leaking toilet. Apparently it's leaking from underneath. Oh, that would explain that. Running down the back here. This flush cone looks like it's been glued on, so that should be interesting. My only issue is, there's nowhere to shut the water off. Unless I go down in the cellar, to which I haven't got a key for that. 
So I'm going to have to try and do this uh, live. Nice Thomas Dudley siphon, two part siphon. If I prop this ball valve up though, with something, <laughs> should be able to flush this and uh, work on this live. It'll be the washer on the bottom of the siphon itself, which is either perished or I'll just replace it. But I need to get the water out of the system first. A little bit of solder wrapped around. <laughs> Most expensive piece of string that I've got. Because I don't have any string. Risky business, but hopefully we'll be able to manage with that. So we'll just disconnect this out here and undo this screw. Slide that off the handle and this should just pull up. the rest of that water out there now. So to use this little cordless wet vac, well, Hoover vacuum um, as a wet vac, you need to put this filter in. You can use this filter for vacuum and dust up as well. I just don't, I don't think it's as, as good as uh, that one itself. Better empty that first, Anna. But yeah, you need to have one of these HEPA filters. I think that's what it's called. Of uh, toilet bits, we should have a washer for that siphon. I think that'll be too big. It's normally a flat, thin one. These are off. Push button siphons. You can undo this and this off out the way. Hopefully, leave this flush pipe in position so I'm not disturbing that cone down there. The old washer, but my concern is I'm just picking up on the camera. There's a crack either side of this hole, and I can feel it with my fingernails. So I put a bit of it's kind of like CT1 sets underwater silicone on that and hope for the best. Sorry for the next guy, I'm sorry. Let's put a bit of tape around this. So I'll tighten back up now with some tape on. Not over tighten that because it wants to keep jumping a thread. Bet this pisses out now. Basically that one is going to be a wait and see and sometimes that's what happens in uh, in this game. Leaks only occur over time. It was dry when I left it. I checked it for at least 15 minutes after that and it's still dry but <laughs> there's nothing to say that tomorrow morning it might not have started weeping again. And if it has I've just um, shown the client the little splits or cracks in the system itself and said if it comes back we'll just have to uh, replace the system. System shouldn't be that bad of a job anyway. It's just a normal, old fashioned, low level water closet. So, this next one we've been called out to, this Worcester CDI, is just a routine service. And then I spotted this. You can see the staining on this bolt, but none of the others. I took the uh, heat exchanger front plate off and found this gasket has failed in this corner. There's the new gasket. These are supposed to be replaced every time you go inside here. So every service, I suppose. But I don't think this has ever been replaced. You can just see the crack in there. But yeah, it's not happening anywhere else. So that was the top right hand corner. So that goes in the bin. We'll get this cleaned out. 
whilst we're here. Put a towel down because I'm going to be uh, using the Karcher, the mini Karcher, about 100 quid from Karcher themselves, the website, really handy for servicing boilers. And this is the tool you need for cleaning the uh, C CDR heat exchanger, although I do sometimes use a hacksaw blade. <laughs> go down I'm going up for the minute just because I'm just showing you what's what but you'd normally go down as you can see that one's clear now that one's clear now but then we've got a blockage in this one so we need to do a bit more cleaning on that I'm gonna blast all that sediment down through into the bottom of the P exchanger and then into the condensate trap that's what it should look like when it's done, nice and clean. Don't forget this little front cover before putting the door back on. And there's a stain at the bottom of this, a white stain where the condensate had been sitting before, which I've realised I've put upside down. <laughs> Don't tighten one side up, fully tight at once. Um, do opposite corners. There's only two corners on this. And obviously you've got to clean out your trap because all that gunk has ended up in the... Yeah. Good old Worcester, eh? <laughs> I'm going to put this in chimney sweep mode now. So I'm holding the chimney sweep function button for about 10 seconds and the light will go orange. Turn that up to maximum, it's maximum mode. Minimum, back down to minimum, which is obviously minimum mode. But we run it in max. I'm just gonna run the probe round everywhere here just to check that that seal has worked and there's no other issues. So another CDI saved. Uh, when I showed the customer the problem, there was, well, do we need a new one? But on the slide, they are my favorite boiler, the CDI Classic. Um, so yeah, burn a door seal. You're supposed to change them every time you interrupt, go inside the heat exchanger. Don't know when the last person has done that. Don't know when it was last serviced. Uh, fifth, uh, 10, 10 pound, the actual seal is. And that's all it was. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you've not, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to uh, click that subscribe button. And I will catch you on the next one.